Okay, our next speaker, our next speaker, all the way from Nyack, is going to explain, no, 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 oh. I'm always spilling drinks. I do. Our next speaker is going to explain this isn't the talent thing how this started. Thing yet. But soon, right? Soon we'll do the talent Soon thing. we'll do the talent share. Soon we'll do the talent share. Okay, this next speaker was part of the inner circle that started UA lo these many years ago. Sat with Andrew and Hallie and some of the other crew, some of which are no longer long. But he was long, she was long lost for many years, departed, went on to other fellowships. But today we have her back to describe exactly what happened. Those many, you know, Bill W. asked the guy at the hotel, like, is there another drunk I can go when he met Dr. Bomb? This is like Dr. Bomb. <laughs> Bobette. <laughs> And she's going to explain what happened in the back room in Nyack. Uh oh. <laughs> With that, I give you. Hallie. Hallie. <laughs> Yay. Hi. Hi. Where did I get this? I'm not telling. Thank you. Thank you, Miss, Miss Franny. Did you write the symptoms? Well, I suffered from the symptoms, but, you know, <laughs> do what I can. <laughs> Don't you hate frizzies? I mean, I think I've got a, a lot of split ends. Where's my hairdresser? I think I've got some colics issues. No, anyway, seriously, folks. <laughs> Many years ago in Nyack, we said, this got to be a way. One day over Borscht in Kielbasi, we said, let's do it. Uh, you know, it's sort of like, it's an insane thing to start a 12-step fellowship. It's even as, as insane as his hair is, because it's so upset. Damn it. I feel like going out and 13-stepping myself. <laughs> Oh my God, so many programs, so little times. <laughs> Let's have a hand for the multiple, multiply addicted, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see, if it's Monday, it's gotta be AA. If it's Tuesday, NA. If it's Wednesday, OA. If it's Thursday, ACOA. On Friday, 12-step anonymous, anonymous. If no one shows up, another successful meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, folks. So, they all laughed when I said, they all laughed when I sat down to find, found a 12-step fellowship. They said, you started 12-step fellowship? I said, yes, I will. If it's the last perm I get. Damn, it's not easy being a woman. I have a lot of us. It's not easy. Let's have it for the women. It's so hard with the hair and everything. You want to borrow a rubber band? I do. Thank you. I'm in distress. I'm in distress. No, it's little Andrea. 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 Yes. Thank you. So um, one of the things that happened with uh, starting at 12 Step Fellowship is you get all puffed up. You're sort of like a, you're sort of like the poppin' fresh doughboy in the Pillsbury commercial. <laughs> you become all, all carved out. And you go for five years staying all carved out. And <laughs> don't look at me like you're the judges of the Nuremberg trial. <laughs> That reminds me of mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> Who were so judgmental, I didn't care. 
So all, I just flip them the bird. They say, hey, why don't you go to school? I'm sorry, I'm watching Days of Our Lives. <laughs> As the world turns, Ryan's Hope. Oh, I remember. Our, I, I, didn't you love Barbara Eden and I Dream of Jeannie? God, she was such a fox. <laughs> God, I don't have a little lamb to rub. Oh, well. <laughs> so when you start a 12-step... <clears throat> when, <laughs> when you start the 12-step fellowship, <laughs> people say, you're crazy. Don't do that because... They don't know why you should start it. And the thing is, is that you want to start a 12-step fellowship, but you don't have any recovery. <laughs> How could you start a 12-step fellowship in something that you have no recovery in? It's sort of starting a beauty salon and not knowing how to do color. Well, is that my rubber band? No, okay, anyway, so. <laughs> So a lot of people didn't know why UA should exist, because they figured, be gentle. <laughs> Thank you. They didn't, know, they didn't know why UA should exist. And I, and I said, well, you know, the whole idea of it is that if you're you know, living on the island and you got two different caves, and one cave's great, the other cave sucks, you know, the under is, is in the sucky cave. <laughs> you don't want to do that, you want to be in the good cave, right? <laughs> so. They, they bought it. You know, like the whole founding of UA was like in, in Halley's house. One night, we had about 15 DA people, and uh, it was a big Thursday night meeting. And I showed up. It was like a sales call. So I had the symptoms, you know, very crudely written out, and I passed it out to everybody. And they just like totally had a major hurl all over the carpet. I mean, it was like a $500 carpet bill. <laughs> but it did connect. It did connect. And the, uh, and I guess it, <clears throat> Mike was totally, I met Mike in the hallway outside of a DA meeting, and I was standing there handing out flyers. I would stand there, say, UA, UA. <laughs> people would just, th most people would just throw it in the garbage. Is that the Rastafarian look? Oh my God, it's like Barb Marley all over the place. Did you make it? So you're not doing jerk chicken, you're doing Michigana chicken. <laughs> Michigana chicken, not jerk chicken. <laughs> it sort of has a balance to it, doesn't it? It's great. <laughs> and so I, was, I met Mike one night. I was, I was just standing out there at 12 West 12th Street, and I just handed him a flyer. Do you remember that? You were going to the DA meeting. I said, here's the flyer. And here he is, eight years later. Yeah. Flyers work. So when you want to start a new meeting, go out into the hallway outside of a DA meeting and hand out the f flyer. Just don't put UA on it. Just don't put UA. Say, you know, Grace Episcopal Church. <laughs> Hot meeting. <laughs> Multi-addictives allowed. <laughs> so Mike, Mike, uh, and sort of Mike, I didn't, speak to, I didn't speak to you for like, I think years at that meeting. He just sort of came in. And you were there, and and John came in, and and you know, like you know, it's like I was just you know, I came in with my media. I would I would go to to Kinko's every Saturday morning and Xerox more symptoms and tool things. It was like really low tech. We didn't have any website or anything. Yes, dear. Where did they come? From? No, tell me the birth of the symptoms. Okay, the birth of the symptoms. <laughs> it was a very difficult delivery. <laughs> I had to have a C-section and everything. In fact, since it was UA, I had a D minus section. <laughs> I still have the scars. Let me show you. Oh, uh, no! Don't do that! Stop! <laughs> you see, this is very therapeutic for me because any like big shitism with this, down the toilet. <laughs> a big flusheroo! <laughs> It says in the big book, don't take yourself so damn seriously. Okay, how am I doing? Yeah. I think I'm making a pretty good damn fool of myself tonight. Yay! Yay! Woo! Everyone stand up and just go, come on, we gotta do a collective. Everyone just stand up. Everyone stand up and go,
right, sit the hell down. <laughs> Just sit down. That's enough fun. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you. You're also on Facebook already. <laughs> Yes, I think after tonight, I'm going to be totally defriended on Facebook. <laughs> All of a sudden, I went from like 500 followers to Murray Abramowitz on East 2nd Street in Brooklyn. <laughs> and he's on, the, he's on the fence. <laughs> I thought he was okay, but boy, when I saw him in the wig. <laughs> so, uh, okay, how did the symptoms happen? Um, how do you remember? I do. My God, Hallie showed up. <laughs> Good to see you again. <laughs> the symptoms happened because it's sort of weird. I was, it was in the winter of, it was in the winter of 2005, many years ago. I remember it as if it were yesterday. <laughs> I, I was saying, hey, I'm solvent in DA. Maybe it wasn't that I was solvent in DA. Maybe I had had too much solvent to drink, but... <laughs> Okay, I've got to that moment. <laughs> and I said, something's wrong with this recovery picture. Something is wrong, right? You see, Mike, you were saying, you know, like something's missing here. There's something missing. I can't exactly put my finger on it. I don't know what. But something's rotten. Something, some, some, you know, it's not like you walk in and you, and you smell. Yeah, something's rotten. The kugel is burnt. Oh, it's not good. <laughs> so, someone burnt the kugel, you know? And so that was how, that was how I was having a someone burnt the kugel moment in my life. And I said, so, you know, where, what's the thing here? What, did it, what is it? And I went to a DA meeting in February, and jo, uh, jo, uh, yeah, Joanna, you're not going to know who she is. And so was, Joanna was qualifying, and she had been in DA since the year Gimmel. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it was Gimmel Flat for the musicians here. And <laughs> oh, Ed gets that one. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And so he said, I don't know about that one, sort of an abstract reference. You're right, sir, it is. Anyway, so, she, so, so, so basically she was saying, you know, I, I have overcome under-earning because I've worked the steps overcoming under-earning. And at that point, our, a purple or magenta neon sign went off in my mind, and I said, there has got to be a UA. There's got to be a UA. <laughs> it will happen. I will make it happen. And, I, and at that point, I was totally committed that even if it meant that it was just going to be me in a church basement with two other under-earners for the rest of my life, <laughs> that this thing was going to get off the ground. I mean, that was basically it. There was no, there was no question about it. There's no question about it. I said, this, is, this, thing, this, this, this baby is going to fly. I didn't know how, and I didn't know exactly how it would evolve, but it was the first time in my life that I was ever committed except the time in Bellevue. <laughs> but, but, but uh, we all right, and now we're not including electroshock therapy, thank you very much. <laughs> but sort of a block, I don't really remember it. It was sort of like seeing all the episodes of Star Trek running in my head. Oh, God. <laughs> so uh, so I, I, I really sold this thing, um, I, I, was, uh, tell, I was working on the, on the 30 people at the NIAC DA meeting, and I said, you know, look, you know, you know there's got to be this under-earning thing, you know? I mean, it's not just debting. And they said, shut up. <laughs> uh, they didn't like it, but I kept on working on them, because, you know, I've been in outside sales for many years, and, it, <laughs> and I wanted to close, right? You want to close, you want to close the deal. When you got the sales DNA, you want to close the deal. I like to close the back of my wig here because it's sort of itchy, but okay. I really do. I re my respect for women has gone up. Uh, I mean, on a hot day, I'm getting, I'm getting like, uh, I'm, I'm shushing back here. It's like a schwitz. It's like a schwitz, I tell you. I'm going to take my purse and leave. But it's so... Okay, I'll come back. So I was saying, you know, like, you know, I was saying, you know, Joe, you know, we got this, we, we got, uh, you know, with the, now the, the amazing thing about commitment to a thing is that after about three months of me working on them, you know, just, uh, just, just, just pounding away, every week, under, uh, under, they, they agreed to meet at Hallie's house. 
And so Rick shows up, and Rick's the lawyer, and he said, the thing about, about commitment to a thing is that you never know where a great idea is going to come from, right? Right? <laughs> Hello, is this thing on? I'm so upset. I hate it when that happens. So he said, we got to keep track of our time. That wasn't my idea. That was his idea. He said, we got to keep track of our time. And we just sort of sat there, like he said, water is wet. <laughs> The sky is blue. <laughs> you will look really strange in a wig. <laughs> so we began this whole thing of keeping track of the time. And Hallie, if you go onto the website and you see this sort of like complex timesheet, that was her creation of like list priorities and, and she's got all the numbers on the side. I came up with a much more primitive thing of just like rip, you know, getting, taking a piece of coal and writing it on the side of a... <laughs> of a chalkboard, okay, business, vision, <laughs> recreation, <laughs> self-care. Yes, no boxes. What? Yes, no boxes. Yeah, yes, no boxes. <laughs> <laughs> How do we feel today? <laughs> What's it? Oh, is that? oh my God. <laughs> I feel like an under-earning Liberace. <laughs> I'm being elegant, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm being, I am being Trey Chic. Uh, the oh ye of little faith. <laughs> I'm not sure I've never done that before. <laughs> I feel like Claudine Lager. <laughs> That's a good look, right? Okay. <laughs> so here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was is that <laughs> so I had all these funny little DAers in a house. <laughs> and I said, here, okay, DAers, this is the thing. These are the symptoms. So I had I had gotten the symptoms, I ripped them off from what earn you what you deserve. I mean basically it's like, <laughs> No, I, I I had I had I used some of what Jerry's writing was about. <clears throat> and I also use experiences of my life, like the acting class. For example, every Sunday night at 8 o'clock, I had an acting class, and I felt at about 7.55 that I had second-degree hypothermia. <laughs> I basically felt feverish, warts, boils were breaking out. Uh, I was losing any, uh, I was becoming incontinent. It was, uh, you know. <laughs> Thank you. By 9.15, I made a complete recovery. So I said, there's something going on here. So that came, that created false symptoms of physical illness. It came out of that acting class, so NIAC. Possession consciousness. We, you know, I've talked about the cup. I had a fin of the newcomers. One night I was, uh, do we have a cup? Oh, yes. Here we go. There's, there's Hi, Mike. Look at this. So it was about, it was this type of cup. It was a mug. mug. It was a mug. <laughs> thank, you very, th thank you very much for that bit of vocabulary assist. <laughs> So I had the so I so so I was sitting in my apartment, you know, and this is the apartment that across the street there was a dumpster. <laughs> and my office was facing a dumpster. The landlord said, Take this apartment, it's got a dumpster view. I said, That's for me. <laughs> I said, hmm. <laughs> It smells like cave to me. <laughs> I'll put a spell on you <laughs> because you mine. She's looking at me. She's looking at me like 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 my ex-wife. Where did you show up? So anyway, I had the cup in my hands. And this was probably after I b began reading Earn What You Deserve and, and, and the DA meeting. And one night, there was this like big evil shard of porcelain sticking up from the, and it was coffee. So what I did was, I turned the cup around. 
<laughs> it smelled like cave, right? <laughs> and I drank from this side. And I looked at myself and I said, bitch, are you crazy? <laughs> You are a psycho bitch. I said, bitch, you must be high. Drink it from that. <laughs> then I tried to set my alarm clock, and I was pushing down the button. You know, it was one of those clocks where you put hour and minutes, and I dislocated a middle digit. Because there was so much crap, there was so much shit in that little thing, I couldn't push the button. And all of a sudden, I heard the scampering from the kitchen. I had mice with rhythm. I had percussion mice. And it was coming all, and I was looking at my computer monitor. It was like six years old. It was like black and white. It was, you, had, you know, you had a hitter on the side to be able to, you know, get your email. <laughs> and I was looking at the carpet. The carpet was all dirty. It was, it was, uh, it was molted. It was some multi-carpet thing. And it occurred to me that I was living in a cave. I was living in a cave. And the thing was, you may think I was making $20,000 a year. You may think I was making forty dollars or $16,000 a year. Take a guess how much I was making while living in this shithole. <laughs> I was making I was making eighty thousand dollars a year. I was I was making eighty thousand dollars a year. So when you think about cave, I've come by this honestly, very honestly. So it hit me in one night that under earning is about living in an experiential cave. It was about living in an experiential cave. Isn't that like so, like T. Harv Eker? <laughs> and, and the whole, no, isn't that so Edgar Tolley? Doesn't work either, okay. So, <laughs> some work, some don't. You gotta keep hurting them out of the ballpark. <laughs> That's right. It was, it was so, are you getting deep cracked soap around me? I hope not. <laughs> So it, it occurred to me that the whole idea was to get out of the cave, and the apartment was just a symbol of the life I was living. And that getting out of the cave was a whole spiritual journey. So once I knew that, I was able to really sell it to those DA people. I was really able to, to come up with this whole metaphor, series of analogies about what this whole lifestyle was. And it just totally nauseated them. But the thing was, we did meet. Rick came in with the timesheet. And so God was with us. God was with us. And uh, except for that carrot cake that Hallie made, which was totally nauseous, and it's a mold on it. <laughs> but anyway, God was mostly with us. So, <laughs> so we said, you know, let's start this UA meeting. Let's start the UA meeting. And on October 16th, 2005, we had the first UA meeting in America face to face on this planet. First one. And then we said, okay, what do we do now? And so the whole idea was a Gina. How many people listen to UA on the phone? Okay. I am from New York, and as Michael tell you, we have more 12-step meetings in New York than, than Carter has little liver pills. If you can't recover in New York, babe, just kiss your ass goodbye. We got a fellowship for everything in a two-block radius. You name the A, we have it. In fact, we've got a bunch of A's that don't even exist anywhere else. My favorite is latecomers and procrastinators anonymous. No one ever shows up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second time I used that joke today, and it still works. <laughs> it still works. I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> oh, okay, the 12 step meeting index is. Yeah. Thank you. Adult children of depressives. <laughs> Another meeting that never got off the ground. <laughs> anyway, so uh, where was I? Uh, 
So the thing about New York is that we, do, we have a million face-to-face -face meetings. Thank you. A million face-to-face -face meetings. I'm getting timed here. And so one of the things that Gina brought to the world is that she was the chair of the BDA meeting at 9.15 on Wednesday night. Uh, and she converted the BDA meeting to a UA meeting. So from 2005 to 2006, we had one meeting a week. And that was at 9.15 on Wednesday night. Where? Where? On the phone, silly. <laughs> it was the phone line. It was, uh, it was the, uh, it was actually, uh, yes, it was the alternate line, 775-7100. And uh, Juliet actually started the first UA phone meeting. And do uh, and, uh, you remember that? Yeah. She started the first UA phone meeting. So let's give her a hand. <laughs> Juliet started the 830 meeting. The 830 meeting. And, and I basically picked it up. And I became meeting obsessive, so I started like 400 phone meetings, and I and I became and I began living on the UA bubble. And as John will tell you, when he met me, I was uh, parked on and parked on stupid and stuck on dumb. So, because I was, you can't recover when you live on a fellowship. You've got to be in the fellowship. Okay, so. It went, it, it, I mean, one of the biggest, I remember when we had the Wall Street Journal thing, I met Mike in the elevator, and he had like eight copies of the Wall Street Journal. And, it went, and Mike, was, Mike was really high about it also, because we had made the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> I mean, that's an amazing thing, a little for stunk of a thing in Nyack being in the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> I mean, where does that come from, man? You know, it's just an amazing thing. And so I thought all the articles would, would work that way, but of course that, <laughs> that didn't. And, but you go through a learning curve. You know, I mean, the, the, what we passed here at the WSC this weekend was a whole public outreach document, which, is, which in terms will help us deal with the press. Now, all the other big boy fellowships have that, now we do. So you go through a learning curve. And uh, the big thing for me, one of the big highlights for me, and, and it's how whacked out of it was I, I was, I was flown to England to do the first London Share Day three, three years ago. And I did a 12 hour Share Day alone. And I had almost zero recovery at the time. Zero, <laughs> zero recovery. But you see, what I did is that I had, I had a head full of UA, but a, but a, but a, uh, a belly button full of deprivation, but, I, but they didn't know that. I understood the ideology. I was able to teach UA, but I wasn't really able to live it at that time. I really wasn't, and, there, and that's a big like, difference. But uh, this, this whole week has been so magical. It really has. It really, it's just been a mad, do you feel it? I mean, you feel it? It's such, man. You know, it's sort of, it's, it's like, you know, Mike, Mike uh, and I have not always gotten along. We've had our moments of uh, friction. A <laughs> big surprise there, right? <laughs> but he's a sweet guy, you know? He's a sweet guy. Uh, he really does care. He really does care about UA. He really cares about grow, helping grow the fellowship. Uh, Eddie has busted his ass in California for UA. Let's busted his ass, man. I mean, like, real, like, put, putting the flyers out, meeting people in the parking lot at 4 o'clock in the morning, you know, getting, getting those uh, share days up, going out and buying food, really getting into the whole spirit of it. Uh, Bella has, and Steve have been phenomenal through this week. I mean, if, if, if we had olives that needed capers to be inserted, Bella would have done it. She would have done it. She has been, she has like dotted every eye. In fact, she consulted us on the color of these wigs. And she said, you want magenta, mauve, uh, pink, chartreuse. So it's people, uh, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan in the back, stand up man, Jonathan has busted his ass with phone meetings, marketing. <laughs> and there are these special souls that come in to UA, they come into the fellowship and bring it gifts, bring it growth bring it development, and we all can do that. Are you guys willing to do that? Yeah. Are you willing to do that? Come yeah. on.
Actually, Andrew, that, that might be a great segue into if you wanted to give a little bit about your vision about where, your, where UA is going from here. This is our first World Service Conference and Convention. Next year is going to be the second, and it will be a tradition, right? And that's well, going to build on the growth and the expansion of the program and the fellowship, hopefully around the globe. We can start looking at, there's already been requests for uh, translating literature into other languages, and I know that we'll probably get there. So why don't you maybe share a little bit about, you know what I'd love you to do is to start off with your vision that you formulated back in the day, which you've expressed before about bringing souls. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> this is what we do. We bring souls out of hiding. Your soul, my soul. We bring souls out of hiding in the entire picture of what your life is, of what my life is, of what prosperity means to you, to you, to the rest of your life, whether you have 10, 5, 20, 50, 80 years to live. What do you want that to be? How prosperous in the full meaning of the word do you want that to be? That's what we're about. We're not about abstaining from white flour. We're not about abstaining from alcohol. We're not about abstaining from gambling. We're not abstaining from uh, food, from p porn, uh, massage parlors, race tracks. Hey, that sounds pretty good, I think. <laughs> we're not. We're about coming out of hiding. The comedy that I'm doing for you now is me praying for the willingness to serve you. It's praying for the willingness to serve God. Every performance I do, every workshop I've done here, is oh, I always start with a prayer. I, God, please allow me to serve them. Please allow me to serve you. And I often follow that with, with I'm a brilliant speaker to the degree that I am. I'm a brilliant comedian to the degree that I am. And I'll do that 40, 50 times because I want to render better service. So every person that you touch in your, when you go back to your towns, every person that you meet through other fellowships, and they say, what is this UA? Tell them one word. It's about prosperity. It's about coming out of our caves. It's about living a better life. It's about living an abundant life. We're not charging dues for it. You don't have to buy a timeshare. You, you're not, you don't have to uh, uh, sign up for a Tony Robbins seminar. We're doing it because we need other people to help us recover. We need other people to help us recover. In the 12-step literature, it says, you know, on Bill Wilson, I need, on the days where I felt really horrible, I went to Towns Hospital and I spoke to a drunk. We need to do the same thing. We need to do, uh, talk to under-earners in our lives, in our business, and they're going to say, what is this UA about? What is under-earning? And a thousand ideas are going to go dancing in their head like fireworks on 4th of July, and you're going to say, it's about prosperity. It's about prosperity. And when, what's the vision for UA? That basically a million people within the next 10 years are helped by the fellowship. It can happen. It can happen because of phone lines. It could happen. A million people coming out of under-earning in Africa, in China, in Asia, in Central America, people in villages, people who don't speak English, people who are in, in, in a billion different caves and countries all over the globe who are condemned to live grade D and C lives can go to grade B lives and grade A lives and A plus lives. Billions of people over the next million years having more prosperity, having more balance, having more fun in their lives. That's what we're about. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. That was great. So there's a vision that's obviously been broken down into goals and then action steps and then implemented on, not alone, but in, 
in with with help with other people. I'm thinking, trying to think of a word. What I'd like to do is um, ask the the few of you people that whoever here has got a vision that they feel so inspired to share with with the group, to come on up one at a time. Maybe maybe at the speaker there, and then also while that's happening, anybody that wants to participate in the talent show to come on over while those people are sharing their vision over to Bella to sign up for the talent show, and we can all we can do that now. So, Juliet? Should, should I say, stay here? Yeah, sure. Okay, so I just wanted to share about my experience with Andrew because he's, he founded the program and what a gift it's been for me under Earners Anonymous because without Andrew, I would still be in the cave somewhere on the Upper East Side of Manhattan with a you know, pre-war building that didn't have enough electricity and that was fourth floor walk up. And um, he, he's just a phenomenal person. I'm so, so grateful. I, I certainly wouldn't be where I'm at today. And when I came to um, he actually helped me. The earning plan meetings I had with Mike and Andrew helped me become bi coastal to go back and forth between LA and New York. And when I had my earning plan meeting, I told Andrew, I'm going to LA. I found an agent out there. He was like, Oh, good. Then you can take UA to LA. And it had never occurred to me to do that. And I was like, Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's fine. Not a problem. Like, you know, I just didn't know that. Actually, I think and look back on it that that was why Higher Power sent me here. It was under the auspices of an acting career and an agent, but it really was to come here and start that meeting at, on Grobner Boulevard and um, the meeting on um, at the Actors on Wilshire. That was really the purpose, but it was under the auspices. It was under it was under disguise of my uh, acting aspirations, and so that's how Higher Power works, you know. And I remember you know starting that first meeting, and there were these delinquent guys that had to be there and they asked you to sign at the end of the meeting and I we don't have that in New York you know we don't have that at all so uh, they were sitting there and I was reading them forcing them to read the 12 and 12 replace and I said replace the word alcohol with under earning and when they would we, they wouldn't do it like they would accidentally slip and say alcoholic I would say under earner say it, under earner, and I would force them, you know, to do it the way I was saying, and um, then they came up to me at the end and said, could you, miss, could you please sign this? I was like, sign, what are you, really? Like, they were not there for UA. They were there for any 12-step meeting whatsoever. But I, and I called Andrew, he goes, it doesn't matter. That was a UA meeting. It doesn't matter. You are carrying the message. So anyway, I am just so grateful to be part of um, founding UA and, and helping it grow. Thanks. Thanks, Juliet. Thanks, Juliet. Hi, I'm Sonia. Hi, Sonia. Um, the question is, what's the UA has done for me? Um, Actually, the question is, what's your vision? Oh. Share your vision with us. <laughs> well, you know, my vision is, um, you know, when I come out of my cave, I'm so much, and I'm so huge and fun and loving that I, I get so many people like, oh my God, I just love her, that I go hide. <laughs> so this is like, really helped me feel people really supporting me and um, seeing me and loving me. And because of that, I had to let go of people who said, don't act like that, don't be like that, you're too much here, you don't do that, don't say that. <laughs> and because of that, I've been able to do this for my little talented son, who I just saw was so full of life, and I could totally support him and not squash him. I mean, it was there, because I was squashed. And, um, he just, every, every time he saw a little sewer, he thought that was a stage, and he would just sing his little heart out, no matter where we were on the top of a sewer, at two and a half and three. And I was able to support that vision and that dream. So that's what, that's what I see as being his manager and also doing my vision, which is being a life coach. Is that what we're supposed to? Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly, yeah. And an uh, intuitive healer and um, empowering women to support each other and not character assassinate or compete because there's enough love, there's enough abundance for all of us. It, and we need to w really support each other to be all we can be. Even if you're more beautiful than me, thinner than me, happier than me, it's enough. And that's what I really want to teach women. So that's where I'm at. Great, thank you. Awesome. Mindy. Hi, my name's Mindy, and I'm with the Altadena meeting. And, Hi, Mindy. And um, we share our vision for one full minute each meeting. This is mine, my vision. We have a prudent reserve. 
I earned half our expenses by December 11, 2013 from sources known and unknown as a staffing company. In return for the money, I support business owners with QuickBooks Consulting, payroll services, bookkeeping, workshops, teaching. My office area is warm and inviting, organized and uncluttered. I am growing my business, helping people and getting my full rate. I invest in myself and my future. I have the advanced certification. I create a community by running meetup groups, writing a monthly newsletter and speaking. I establish a great team of consultants and expand my business. I continue growing my connection to my higher power. My family is harmoniously connected and we are physically active. I eat healthy, joyfully move my body and enjoy wearing a bathing suit. I am appreciated, valued, and loved. Our debt is paid off. We are tithing 10% regularly. I say yes to life. I have fun. I have a car with great gas mileage that can carry four bikes. I have lots of passive income. And that's one minute. <laughs> that's great. Thank you. Anybody else like to share their vision? I one, yeah. I Eric, have, uh, yes. A vision. My, I've always thought when I first came into UA, hi, my name's Eric. I'm an under earner. Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. And I belong here. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I'll just lift. Uh, I'll hold it. And so, you know, when I came here, it was like this place was full of like artists and people that wanted to be movie stars and people that were in business for themselves. Well, I want to make sure the message gets carried to the Dilberts of the world. <laughs> I work in a government organization and I work in a bureaucracy and I love my job. I like what I do. So it's not just for entrepreneurs and artists. And that's my message that I can hmm. prosper in a government organization in a large, big, I can be a worker be and be happy in that. I don't have to be an artist, even though one day I might be. So that's it, thanks. Thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> All right, it takes a little courage to talk about your vision in front of an audience, especially if you just created it today. You may feel like you don't deserve it. You may feel like you're never gonna achieve it. But the first step along those lines is to share it out loud. And what safer environment but this to do so. So I encourage people to screw up their courage and let it rip. Definitely. I'm Nancy from Ojai, California. So happy to be here. Hi, Nancy. A little stressed because my cat has been alone in the apartment since 10 this morning. So I'm like, but um, my vision is, um, oh, I have a magazine <clears throat> that uh, covers two counties. And my vision is, and it's, it's sparse within the two counties. It's only, a, has a fair amount of, um, People know it in my little area, Ojai, California, and then in the two count, the greater two counties, it's rather sparse, but it's getting more and more known. I'm about to have distribution through the Los Angeles Times in the zip codes I can manage to sell ads for, which I'm trying for uh, 15,000 distribution to start with. And uh, <laughs> so my, my vision is that it'll be the West Coast kind of a West Coast New Yorker, although it'll be a little bit the New Yorker, a little bit the Sun, a little bit um, Reader's Digest, and just a lot of creativity and beauty and interesting articles. It's, it's feature journalism as well as literature. Um, and the other thing is that I'll, it'll also pay for me to go to grad school so I can teach high school and college English. Thanks. Thank you. I just, I, I just like, like to t say a quick story. I met Nancy as I was, driving, I was driving my daughter up to college in San Francisco, and I really wanted to get back to LA, so I, we, we left at six in the morning, I dropped her off, and I turned right around and came right back. And on the way back, it was about 10 o'clock at night, and I thought, I'll try one of the UA phone lines. I don't know what time the phone meetings are. I got on the phone, I called, and there were some people talking. Nancy was one of them, and I was driving right by Ojai, and, and she was on the phone, and we got to know each other, and then you showed up here, and I've heard you from, how how many other earners are there in Ojai? Uh, probably. Probably there are a lot, but there's, yeah. only, the one, there's one other that told me about the program who's been in the program, but she's not here right now. But it's so great to meet you in person, and what a great way to make a connection. Thank you know, you. anytime, even when there's no phone meetings, you can connect with another under earner. So, Bill, go ahead. Well, uh, two years ago, I was at a DA share a day in Connecticut where I lived, <clears throat> doing a vision 
we had magazines uh, clipping it out, and my board started to look like trains and moving and starting over. And um, <clears throat> there were maps of different parts of the United States. So it was a transition type of thing. And I had California dreaming somewhere above California. A couple of months later, I learned about UA. And an email came. Uh, I had left a job in Connecticut with the government that I liked, but I wanted to try something else. I couldn't get back in. So an email came across um, with the exact job I wanted, an A job, but it was in California. So I just kind of put it aside. It came up again, and here I am. I had a vision board with everything in that job. It happened to say California Dreaming, and I was in California six months later. I love it. I love it. There was that. no plan for that. <laughs> it was my vision board. That's fantastic. I love hearing those kind of stories.